you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Colleen Ballinger, here with my co-host. What's up, guy? Carrot. Carrot. You know, a lot of people are calling you Carrot in the comments. As they should. Um, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And to my lovey, happy Valentine's oh, Day, lovey. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. It's love. not Valentine's Day the day that we're recording this, but no. it will be Valentine's Day on the day that it comes out. So happiest of Valentine's Days How to romantic you. to be uh, listening to us. I know. What a way to spend the day. I think so. I think so, too. I hope this is a very romantic episode. I think it will be. It yeah, could be. It could be. Um, what do you mean carrot? Like they're all, because our daughter called me carrot. A mm-hmm. few times. Yeah. Yeah. So people in the comments like to call you Carrot. And I think that's a great name for you. So I'm going to call you Carrot too. Carrot. I love it. Yeah. Um, so obviously on this wonderful podcast, we talk about who or what we think needs to relax. I have so many things I want to discuss, but I thought since it's Valentine's Day. I can't wait. Should we, should we talk about some Valentine's Day thingies or should we do our relax first? No, go for it. Yeah. What do you got? What do you mean? Well, I didn't just, know you had I, anything prepared. Well, yeah. I mean, there's just some. Interesting little facts. I feel like we've maybe talked about some of these before on some past episodes, Valentine's Eve episodes. Perhaps. That's the past. I don't know. You don't need to worry about that anymore. But if we did talk about this, I don't remember it. Okay. Someone talk about it again. <laughs> did you know uh-huh. that? Um, oh, I didn't know there were, it was a quiz. It's not. It's not a quiz. Okay. It's just interesting information I found out. The popular Valentine's Day candy, um, the candy hearts. Yeah. That started say, out. Like, be mine on them. Those things. Yeah. They started out. Do you know what they started out as? Um. Medical lozenges. Did they? You know what? I don't like that word lozenge. It's not a good word. I don't like the way it sounds. It feels weird in my mouth. What do you think the origin of that word is? I don't know. I have no idea, but I just know that it's a way, like say like lozenges. Like that's not not fun to say. Anyway. What else um, would you call it? Sorry. um, Because you don't want to call it like a sucker. Well, yeah, you call it like a, um, what do you call it? When you have, when you're saying, oh, can you hand me one of those, uh. What do you call them? Do, I don't call them lozenges. Well, there's not another word for it. There is though, because I feel like when I'm sick, I don't say like, oh, I need to go buy some I lozenges. Said, I almost said like throat drops, but that's yeah. not right. Cough drops, cough, cough drops. drops. Cough. Was, oh no. We are it's tired. Not, it's not throat drop. Okay. It's cough drop. You anyway. Cough, well, you can't call a candy a cough drop. Well, they started out as medical lozenges. Boston-based sure. pharmacist Oliver Chase invented the machine that produced small medical lozenges. When he saw the popularity of these small pop-in medicines, he turned them into candy with cute little messages on them. I don't understand. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't follow. So, so some doctor made, was like, "Hey, these are for he you made to feel better." Drops. And mm-hmm. then he was like, cough drops. I know, but I'm calling them throat drops. Okay, you know? got it, and got then it. he, and then he was like, these are popular because all these people are, are sick and they help their throats. I'm going to pivot to candies and put messages, put on messages them. on them and sell them for yeah. Valentine's. That doesn't seem like a, that's not a straight pivot. That there's more. Yeah. I know there's more to this story there's more to this that story I don't know. Here. And I did read this on multiple different websites and I never saw like anyone do a deep dive into like You're how giving that- him like credit. And everything, it just sounds like... I'm, I'm sorry, love. It's just it's what I'm reading here. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So here's another... There's a bunch of random weird facts about Valentine's Day. I just picked a couple that I thought were interesting. Love it. Um, there's a sad reason behind giving chocolates on Valentine's Day. Why is it sad? Physicians in the old days... What's with doctors? Okay. Um, <laughs> the olden day doctors. Physicians in the old days would recommend chocolate to people who were suffering from a broken heart or pining after a lost love. Uh-huh. Um... I I what? love chocolate more than anybody on this sure. earth. Maybe dark chocolate, especially. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, but I don't know that if that's true. The doctors don't sound like they they're very smart. Enough. If they really thought that, like, did they think? Do you think they actually thought chocolate was gonna cure these broken hearts, or well, is it I just like a nice what's, thing? What, do you have a date? Do you have a year? Because I think at this point in time, doctors were like, "Oh, give your baby some cocaine; they'll be fine." Yeah, like, they were you like, know, "Well, like, we gotta I, wash our hands before we do a surgery." Right? Nah. Yeah. That's um, pointless, you know? Well, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't have any more information. I, I, I'm reading you all the information. <laughs> what is what is your issue with milk chocolate? Oh, oh, okay. I don't have an issue with milk. Did I just say milk weird? Milk. Milk chocolate. I say milk, milk weird. You say milk fine. I say a lot of things weird. Milk, I think I say normal. Anyway, yeah. milk chocolate is 
delicious, incredible, delectable if you are not in America. I think American milk chocolate tastes okay. like waxy yuckiness, but I've had milk chocolate in other places and thought it was incredible. Like okay. in Canada or, you know, I've had it in Germany and in, you know, London and Amsterdam. I've had chocolate kind of in lots Europe. of different places, Scotland. Okay. Yeah. Um, but not just here because in Canada too, I thought it was yeah, sure. amazing. Anyway, delicious, incredible in other places. I think in America, they just add too many weird things to it or something. I don't know. Yeah, and it sure. just tastes like wax to me. Okay. But dark chocolate is real great. I like cacao. I love dark chocolate. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, that was something interesting. Okay. So did you know where the phrase uh, wearing your heart on your sleeve comes from? Did I know that? Do you, do you know? Do I know the origin of that yeah. phrase? No. Well, I do. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I know a little bit, only enough to just read you this, but if yeah, you I, ask follow-up questions, I will not have answers. Okay. In the Middle Ages, young men and women drew names from a bowl to see who their Valentines would be. They would wear these names on their sleeves for one week. And today, to wear your heart on your sleeve means being transparent with your affections. Um, but back then, it just meant like, they literally would draw a name out of a bowl and be like, well, this is who I love, I guess. And they'd like pin it to their sleeve. What do you mean? Like a patch? I, I'm, what are they I, pinning know, to their see, sleeve that it's going to last a week? The problem is you're asking follow-up questions. It sounds like embroidery. It Was it? It says like they would wear these names on their sleeves they could then for one week. You can't. A I'm, name and they would pin it to their sleeve. It's, it's something they took out of a bowl. And that, how does that relate to like wearing your heart on your sleeve? Because your love, your, the, your love, the one oh, you love so some is sort on of your sleeve. Tradition where? I don't know, but I think I read somewhere, not on this, <laughs> that um, it, Shakespeare was the first place that like it, someone, it had been mentioned. Shakespeare was the place? No, Shakespeare, like Shakespeare, like in some Shakespearean play or something was the first time or some, I don't know. I'm, where he said where you wear your heart on your sleeve. I read this, but I don't safe. really remember what I was reading. So I'm, I definitely should not be quoted right now. And I don't know what I'm saying, but I feel like Shakespeare, something about Shakespeare and heart on your sleeve was something. I don't remember the... Uh, meat of this where, information. You know, from going forward with this podcast, I think yeah. as far as, I think you need to, when you had to write a paper when you were in uh, high school, right? You would have to cite your sources, right? Mm -hmm. This is back in the day, like, you know, you had to have a bibliography, mm -hmm. you know, and cite your sources. Mm -hmm. So you, to show that you weren't uh, plagiarizing and that you are researching your uh, research for lack of a better term. Right. You're not doing that. Well, yeah. My, my research is Google. You're saying I read some things somewhere, I think. Yeah. But I don't really remember where I read them, but this is. Here's the deal. Okay. I can go deep into information if I'm interested. All these things, I don't care. <laughs> do you <laughs> like, like do you like Valentine's Day? Or like, I are don't you? like it. I don't like it. I Why? Why? I love you every day. I don't need like a day to remind me uh -huh. to love you. Like, do you feel some even... sort of like pressure on this day? No, I don't feel pressure. I'm just like, eh. I, I, well, for, I, so, okay. Well, I think I'll, it's I'll great. To, it's, it's like, a, it's like a day that like, it's great to be reminded of the ones you love. So I think all holidays are fun. Yeah. Like I love holidays and I love like Valentine's day for kids. Like, because like you make the Valentine's day boxes and the Valentine's and give you out have candy. Done that. You've seen, I love you've that. seen really prepared for like the craft of it. But like for children, yes. But you and I, we have like dates and do fun things and whatever. And it's like, I don't need like a special day to do that kind of stuff. I don't know. Right. I just don't like, I just don't really, I don't know. I don't care. I mean, I have, I have a big, oh, I have a huge confession to make that I wanted to, I wanted to make this earlier, but then I just kept forgetting. And I think maybe now is the time to let's make this confession. Okay. I'm not the only one who doesn't like Valentine's day. You don't like it either. You don't do like, we don't do holidays. We're not good at this kind of stuff. You're confessing for me. Wouldn't no, I? Just like, like, okay. Okay. So you and I, we love each other more than life itself. Sure. You're my soulmate, my person, my carrot. Okay. Oh. I adore you. And I don't need a carrot tattoo. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> and, um, Valentine's Day, I don't care because it's like I, I feel this, I feel love for you every single day. I don't need that day. But like there's something we have not discussed that kind of goes in line with Valentine's Day because it has to do with like, you know, a date you're supposed to remember that celebrates love. We have not talked about this and I've been waiting to talk about it on the podcast since November. Mm. You and I. Oh, we, yeah, we didn't even. We. I was thinking about this did the other not day. celebrate. Acknowledge. acknowledge. Talk about. Remember. Have a sentence to each anything. other. 
on yeah. our anniversary last yeah. year. It's sometime in November. I think it might be November 13th or 8th. One of those two, I think sounds right. But we did not that or remember. Not. We didn't acknowledge each other. We there was. It is now February. <laughs> and since our anniversary, which I don't even know how many years it's been. Five, I guess, right? Because Flynn's five. Yeah. So five, it was our five year anniversary. I know. Neither one of us said a thing. I know. We didn't remember. We didn't. And I remembered it like the end of November, maybe beginning of December. I was like, huh. Oh, we both forgot that. I'm yeah. so glad we both forgot that. Like that yeah. it wasn't just one person and the other person got upset about it. Like, you know what I mean? Like we both just like collectively were just like, whoops. And eh, whatever, you know? That's okay. It's okay. We do fun stuff all the time. Like today um, was like a fabulous romantic day. I was just thinking day. about this because I saw like a piece of like um, art that was like dated that I know that I did at a certain point in our relationship. And I was like, oh, was that long ago? And I was like, oh, we never, wait, did we do anything for it? And then I was like, oh no, we didn't. We didn't even talk about it. Yeah, no, we didn't even talk about it. So we're talking about it now. I just thought that was hilarious that we, anyway. We can uh, move it to Valentine's Day and just put even more pressure on. There's no pressure. I don't feel pressure. I just like me. You for two weeks have been saying like, just so you know, I didn't get you anything for Valentine's Day. No, that's not what I've been saying. I've been saying, hey, we're going to the Lions game. And then and this was a it was a very not, big deal. And so this is happened. your I said this is when we were there. When I said we this there, is your like, Valentine's Day gift. I'm I can't top this. That's what I said. So I was like, I can't top this. This is your Valentine's Day present. Okay. So and, and I keep saying, one. like, let's not do Valentine's. I don't want to do Valentine's Day things. What so we're not going to. What do you want to do on Valentine's Day then? Just hang out with you and love you. Okay. Um, and kiss you and, you know, be besties. Sure. Anyway, we're going to move on from Valentine's Day. Let's talk about who needs to relax this week, lovey. Who do you think needs to relax or what? For me? Yes. For and you. I've thought about this a lot. Oh, no. And I've done research. No, I haven't. Okay. Um, uh, buttons. I feel like, have you done this one before? I don't know. Not for me. Buttons? Specifically the buttons that they sew into tags and in the inside of shirts. That is fancy. What? That is so What do you mean? Fancy. It's fancy? That's your response? There are not buttons on my, ta on my tags, like replacement buttons in case yes, your buttons fall off. Yes, replacement buttons. Yes. That's very fancy. It is not. What? Is it not? I thought that was really fancy. There's no, I don't think I, you wear lots of shirts with buttons. I actually. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. I'm going to double down and say like, I almost never see you wear. I think of a shirt that you wear that has buttons. You can't because you don't have any. Hmm. Anyway, why do you hate them? Because you only wear like crew neck sweatshirts. Yeah. Why do you, why do you hate buttons on tags? I just think it's. Uh, Isn't that kind of nice that they're giving you an extra button in case it falls off? <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's kind of sweet. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's, I've never, I've never done anything with said buttons. If it's on a tag, it's going in the trash. I'll tell you that much. If yeah, there's a tag anywhere near me. Sure. But sometimes it's like also, it's like in a little baggy attached to the tag. A baggy? I think maybe this is something different for. These are very expensive shirts. No, it's, it's not an, ex, it's not a price. It's not a price point thing. Like this is just how shirts that come with buttons work. But it's, it's funny how much this didn't land on you because I think you don't own any clothes with buttons. But when you buy pants that have like a button. Yeah. Does, do they come with an extra button? Absolutely not. How is it? You don't know what I'm talking about buttons at all, do on, you? Well, what? But Well, I only wear jeans and like, or leggings. So like, there's not going to yeah, be an extra no. button, like a jean button. I didn't, Those are I didn't think about, I didn't think, I didn't think I had how lost this would be on you. So. As, but why does it annoy you? Isn't that a nice thing in case your button falls off to have an extra? No, I just, I just thought it would be like, you would relate being like, oh yeah, why do they always put those buttons on things as if we're going to like darn a button back? Like if we lose a button, we're going to like sew it back on. Oh, do people not? I, that's I don't what know. It's, that's what it's for. Well, yeah, that's, I know that's In case you for, lose yeah. a button, then you can sew it back on. But like the, the point being like, you then have to, to safe keep this oh, button. I see. So you have to like keep track of it and that's bothersome mm -hmm. to you? Well, it's just like, am I going to do that? No, I immediately... Lose it. They're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Well, you know what, though? But do other people, are they keeping all these buttons that are attached to their clothes, which you can't relate to because you've never in your life have a had a button attached to any purchase of a clothing item that you've ever owned? Hmm. It feels I mean, like maybe. everything I buy, I there's like so. a there, there's like either in the tag, they'll have a button attached to the tag. There'll be a little baggy 
That sounds or so fancy. In the pocket, no, I don't know. There'll be like a little thing with like the an pocket. extra button. Yeah, I don't no. know. Maybe it's a boy clothes thing. I don't know. I don't. Do I, you have any button up shirts? Yeah, I have a couple like flannel button up shirts. Uh huh. And they didn't come with a button? Not that I know of. Are they mine that you took from me? Maybe some of them. I think those came with buttons. Well, not anymore. But you know what? You, I. And you don't wear a lot of blazers. I can't wear. I, I wish I could wear your clothes more often, Lovey, because I love okay. your clothes. They're cozy and like they smell like you. And I just feel like, I don't know. I just like wearing your stuff. You're more stylish than me. Um, but you don't cut the tags out of your shirts. And it's. I do. I try to. Not on the ones I want to wear. And I can't, I can't even hear you speak to me if there is a tag what's in tag? my shirt. What, what's a tag to you? A tag? <laughs> what do you mean? What's a <laughs> because tag? I think you want like, it's not like, oh, there's like a, if there's like a protruding tag that's like really Ugh. scratchy, like, yeah. yeah, I'll cut it out. But when it's like a label, it's just a label. But to label? you, I think. What do you mean label? I don't know. Like it's sewn in and it says. Yes, yeah, like, sewn in. If there's any form of a tag. Right. So you're cutting out everything. Get it out. Cut a hole in the shirt. Right. It's gone. Yeah. Pants too. Jeans. Anything. Like if there's any form of a tag in my clothes, I can't hear you. I cannot function. I can't think. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't walk. Uh-huh. I can't breathe. If there is a tag in my clothes. What, I am the princess in the pea. I feel that pea through 87 mattresses. I feel that. Is there a tag on that shirt? No, there's not. It's like, I think it's like it, it there's, it's one of those ones where it's like, you could hang it up if you needed to like hang it up from a hook hang kind of from, tags. Like, can I see it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, do you I don't understand know what, what I'm saying? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. So it's not like, it's not like a tag. It's Let like, it's like, a, oh, if you need to like <laughs> hang it up on like a hook. Wait, what? Hang it up on a hook? Yeah. Wait, like I if can... you need to like hang oh, it up. Oh, good Lord. But see, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. No, that's gone. I could never borrow that shirt. You would even cut that out. Of course I would. But there's no, but not like. I, the, I, no. Have you ever put on pants and there's like, it's crazy. There's like nine. It's like a, it's like a booklet. booklet. (laughs) Hold on. Can you hold my mic? I'm going to see. I know exactly what you're talking about. I want to see. I'm going to turn my, I bet you, sorry. I'm. I bet you these have, they have a booklet. You haven't taken a booklet (laughs) off yet. See what I mean? It's like it's, I hate that freaking booklet. Chap- what am I going to like? There's chapters in my pants <laughs> on, on like to how. <laughs> there's an introduction. Yeah. I, what? Do they think we're going to read it all? There's, I do. There's sometimes where there's like, I'm shocked at how many pages there are in those books. Like <laughs> the <What> book books? <laughs> a catalog. It is. It's a catalog. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. I can't believe you haven't cut that out. What, let me see. Can I see the back of your sweater? There's probably a hole in it from when I aggressively ripped out a tag. There's oh, you will nothing. not find a tag, Nude. nary a tag anywhere in any of my clothes. There's there is no chance you could <clears throat> not go into my closet in any of my drawers anywhere and find a single tag on any article of clothing unless I have <laughs> never worn it. That is the only possibility that there is a tag on anything that I own. That's the only way it is. Well, I can't I, explain I, well, see, I, I the know rage. This, I, I know feel. this about you because like the, like our house is lousy with them because you, because the first thing I do, I do willy nilly. By the way, Flynn is the exact same. I know way. he is. Well, where do you think he got it? I mean, he got it from you. And guess who did it to me the other day? He got it from you, mom. Maisie. She was like, yeah. Maisie was like, get this out of my shirt. I think it's a universal thing. I, people, I think people don't want them. I think that's- You, you have them in your clothes right now. You're I, well, I think that's covered why, in booklets. Like a lot of like, uh, t- I don't know if you notice this too, but like companies now are just like, they just print it. You I know what I mean? I love that. I'm they just s- print it. They're that. like, we're not going to put a tag on it, but yeah, I don't know. I'm so appreciative of that. I think that's necessary. Um, well, I, I don't think that- Buttons need to relax, but I, I respect your- We've worked our way to more towards- tech, Tags but also definitely like, need to relax, and I'm sure I've done that multiple times. Maybe maybe this is something for someone that they like collect those extra buttons or that they, or they, they do use People them. People collect buttons. Well, yeah, or that they do like, are like, okay, this is this extra button for this shirt, so in case I ever lose one. What, but if it's two years from now and you're like, oh yeah, that had that button. I'm just saying like, it's never yeah, happened. No, 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 For no, my no. whole life, yeah, for my yeah. whole life. Yeah. Like a lot of years, it's never happened to me once- where a shirt came with an extra button and then that shirt lost a button. Then yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I got that button and I kept it. But here's the thing. I keep those buttons. What do you mean? You do keep them? I do. I don't, I don't feel like I can throw them out. But you just said there's no way you'd have a button. I know I need. never will, but I, but just in case, 
Like little, where do you keep them? Like little bowls and things. Like I do, I do, I have them. I have really? the buttons. Yeah. That's kind of cute. Well, now you have them in case you ever need a button, I guess. But I won't be able to find the exact, you know what I mean? I'll be able to find a button. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry that, that you've been going through this. I don't know. I thought it was a good, I thought it's it was a great a, one. I, thought it was I mean, a good it led one. me to talk about my unhealthy obsession with hating tags and clothes. <laughs> it's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah. Well, um, can we, do you want to move on to my relax? Maybe some, there's something legal. Yes. But no, maybe we can the, keep talking. No, legal. but maybe there's like, a, leg, like getting... a legality for, you know, how like mattresses, they're like, you can't rip this tag off. Otherwise like the cops will yeah, come. What's that about? I don't know. I don't, we didn't research that. I don't know. But like, maybe there's something with clothes that they have to tell you. I mean, I think they, you know they, <laughs> they want, <laughs> they want to tell you some things because you know how to like wash the garment. Right. My ear is ringing right now. Why, how does, why does that happen? I feel like we should call your dad. Why does that happen when your ears ring? Like out of nowhere, like that just, now it's gone. Why does that happen? Should we call your dad? It's Whoa, very late I there. Think, I think I'm going to call um, an ambulance, but yeah. I know. <laughs> call the police. Call somebody. Um, okay. I have so many things that need to relax. Sure. Um, speaking of your dad though, I have to say that there were so many sweet comments um, after the last episode, we called your dad and talked to him and everyone is his biggest fan. Everyone loves your dad. Yeah, All of, I was, I went through the comments trying to find comments to read today in the episode and pretty much all of them were just talking about how much they love your dad oh, and nothing nice. else. I'm going to read some more comments at the end of the episode, but I just want to read this one first um, before we move on. Uh, Amy said, please make sure Eric's dad knows that we love him. He should be on Jeopardy. Also do um, either a full podcast or a recurring segment where we ask questions and he answers them off the cuff. And I think this is a very fun idea of like, if you guys ask questions in the comments and I'll just find like an interesting few of them and we can call him and see if he knows the answers. So yeah, leave a comment, ask a question about anything um, you're curious about, something that interests you and we'll, you know, we'll pick a, a couple of them and, and call Eric dad and see if he can maybe. help us out. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe he'll know the answers. Maybe he won't, but regardless, it'll be a wonderful conversation. Okay. Who needs to relax this week for me is myself and my own brain and my lack of childlike curiosity hmm. because Flynn inspired me to research something tonight. Okay. And the thought didn't even Curious. occur to me until he had said it. But Eric and I went to the beach today and it was a wonderful time. We had so much fun. We kind of had a little date and like we went to this new beach we'd never been to before. Yeah. And it ended up being like magical and so fun. And while we were there, we saw this like sea slug question mark, just like this weird sea creature. What was that thing? Exactly. Did you do the research? Exactly. Here's the deal. There have been so many times where I've been at the beach or just been anywhere and been like, oh, that's interesting, huh? And I just move on with my life. Like we saw that weird like sea yeah, creature. Yeah, this was different. I mean- It was bizarre looking. There's lots of weird things in the ocean. But this one was real weird. This one was real weird. Yeah. It was really weird. It was like a, a large oval shell and, and it was like a slug question mark looking slug, thing. Slug, snail that, like, type was thing. Way too, too big for way the shell. Way too big for this yeah. shell. So we just looked at it and go like- not even too big. It looked like he was just in the wrong shell. Right. And I looked at it and I go, oh, that's so weird. Look at this thing. It's so weird. And then we just went about our day. So I, tonight to Flynn, I said, look at this weird thing we found at the beach. Yeah. And he looked at me and goes, what is that? I go, I don't know. He goes, well, you should look it up. Right. We should put it in the index yeah. and find out what that is. He has this thing called and the index. And he, he does this to me so often. I have learned so much in life because of Flynn yeah. being like, what's that tree? What's that flower? What's that bug? What's that rock? What's that anything? He, he asks wants to know. He wants he right asks questions. me yeah. to Google it. He wants to know the answers. He doesn't take just like, you know. I love that too about, I love that about having him. kids. Yeah, is that, yeah. And the reason I'm like, oh man, the, my lack of childhood wonder needs to relax. My own brain, I'm, I'm, I need to relax for not in that moment being like, what is this? I want to look into this. What is this creature? I don't know what this creature is. Why didn't I have any interest? And like, I don't know what that is. I want to learn. I love that about our kids. Yeah. And I don't have that anymore. Maybe I never did, but I was so, I wanted to, I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? Yeah, I guess you're right. So I kind of, you know, searched it. Me too. I immediately then moved on. Yeah. We didn't care. Yeah. We were just like, Oh, it's cool. Like we cared enough to be like, Oh, that's a weird, cool thing. Yeah. I'm going to show you if you're watching, I'm going to show you this creature. And then 
I'm going to tell you what it is because it blew my mind. What is, oh okay? my gosh, no, so, I'm interested. I'm going to show you this creature. This is the little creature thingy, my bobber. It's like this weird shell with a big weird slug inside of it. I don't know. It's, it's very bizarre looking, okay? And so I looked it up. This thing is remarkable. It is called... I'm so excited about this. I've been like drooling about this all night. How did you look it up? I reverse image searched it on Google and it's a giant keyhole limpet, limpet, giant keyhole limpet. And I was, so I tell Flynn, it's a giant keyhole limpet. And he goes, huh, can I see a video of it? What Mm. does it do? Like, and he had more questions, follow up questions. Yeah. Much like you did earlier in this episode. Interesting. And I was like, I don't know. Keyhole limpet. So then I looked up videos and more information on it. Like I did more research. It's it's giant. It's called giant keyhole limpet. Love. What about it? This thing is incredible. What is it? Okay. Okay. So the, the blood of the giant keyhole limpet. I'm sorry, the blood? The blood of the giant keyhole limpet has a protein in it that is used in many cancer treatments and vaccines. Okay. What? It's. Key, uh, yes, keyhole limpet hemocyanin. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. It's a protein found in the limpet's blood that is being tested as a vaccine for various types of illnesses, including cancer. Okay, they've been studying this protein since the 1950s, and um, so basically, like when you know, like when a healthy person catches a cold, their immune system, the, its job is to detect the problem and fight it off. Um, but people with cancer, their immune system does not see anything out of place, so it takes no action. But when this protein, this KLH protein, is administered into the infected cells, mixed with like whatever you know, um, extra you know, scientists are all geniuses, so they'll like mix it with whatever the issue is in the person's mm-hmm. body. I'm not a scientist; I'm not saying it right, but they inject it into their blood, and then it, um, you know, it it acts as an antibody essentially, and it um, helps the immune system to recognize that there's a problem and to help fight it off and act accordingly. And it has been tested in a variety of cancer vaccines like non-Hodgkin's Hodgkin's lymphoma, cutaneous melanoma, breast cancer, bladder cancer. And what's wild is that this, um, pro- sorry if I'm boring you, but this was fascinating to me. I read all about this after Flynn fell asleep. No. I like couldn't stop researching because I was like, what? This is bananas. So this KLH protein is potently immunogenic and it does not cause an adverse immune response in humans. It therefore is highly prized as a vaccine carrier protein because of its size and something else I can't pronounce. KLH protein cannot be reproduced synthetically and it is only available as a purified biological product from keyhole limpets. It's the only place you can get this protein and it works. Like they can't make it synthetically. So uh, So they're taking the blood from and then I watch all these videos of people who but are so like, so you need a protein to carry. Uh, so, so someone was like, scientists and doctors and scientists mostly figured out. I guess ask the right questions. Ask the right questions, and somehow they found there's this one protein that this one creature has. This weird slug thing that is only in like Southern California down the coast a little bit. Like it goes down to Mexico-ish area. I guess it's the only place you can find it. And it has this very specific protein that could be completely life-changing, life-saving, altering for so many people with autoimmune diseases, cancers, and whatnot. And they're, they've they been doing testings with it to put it in vaccines. And the goal is to eventually have like this, you know, preventative vaccine from all these cancers from this sea slug. From a keyhole limpet? Is that not crazy? I've never seen one. I'd never seen one I'd never before seen one either. as many times as we've been to a low tide at the beach there or anywhere right. or in any, you know, sea center museum, right. aquarium type place. I'd never seen it before. I'd never seen it in my life. Didn't I didn't know what it was. I literally thought it was a sea slug that was, was too big for its shell. That's what I thought. I was like, why is that sea slug? It's too big for its shell. You know? And the best part about it, other than that, like it's going to, obviously the best part about it is that it, like hopefully it will, is has, I don't know. I, I, you know, had to stop doing research to come do the podcast, but like, hopefully it has already helped people, but it's still in like, you know, the testing phases, I guess. Um, but they've been doing research on it and testings with it since like 2014 is what I read, but I don't know if I'm correct in my Google searches so far, but, um, 
hopefully it's going to save a lot of people and help a lot of people. But Flynn's favorite part about it okay. was that the hole in the top of that little shell thing, that's essentially it's, 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 butt. wait, it's so that is its shell. It wasn't in the wrong shell. No, it wasn't in the wrong shell. That's, that's what it's shell. supposed to be in. So they all have that little shell with like the hole on the top and that's, and that's the, where they get their waste goes out that hole. Def, so defecate, defecate out the top out of the shell. So it's, it's basically a butthead. <laughs> it's a butthead that helps cancer. I, helps people, I just can't helps va- make vaccines to fight against cancer. Isn't that crazy cool? Well, Amazing? I just think, you know, I think it's important that people ask these kinds of questions and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to knock my own um, theater degree, but like, <laughs> I'm certainly happy that there's some people that were like, I'll get a science one instead. And I found this weird thing on the beach and I'm going to, See if I can synthesize its proteins and incorporate that in some sort of so they 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 figured out a way where it gives it's it's fa- it's cr- I'm sorry if this is boring to anybody listening but like I was fascinated by this that this weird creature we saw on the on the beach we're like that's weird and moved on with our life we had no idea it was literally it it has the potential to save so many lives and it's the only thing with this blood that has this protein in it that they need to make these vaccines and I never would have known we if are, my five year old perfect little son didn't right. go hey learn more about that let's learn more I want yeah. to know more and now I'm like this thing is magical yeah and how special and how did they figure that out that they figured out that this I don't is know the how protein they figured that, uh, well they, they figured out that's the protein that they needed and then they somehow figured out that this particular sea creature had the blood yeah. That that protein in the blood. And if you mix that protein, that that blood with, you know, the other, you know, whatever issue the person's having in their own body, then it can alert the body to be like, oh, this is an issue we need to go solve. Yeah. It's a vaccine. I mean, it's a, people I mean, know what a know. vaccine is. It's like, like the idea penicillin. Of a I don't mean, I don't know. It's like how that figure that out. I think penicillin had something to do with Valentine's Day, by the way. I think like it was like. <laughs> Well, I feel like I read that back. this morning. I didn't mean to, but like, I'm pretty sure I read something about penicillin on Valentine's yeah. Day. I should look into that. Yeah, I don't but anyway, know. How Fro- cool I mean, is that? Even like Frosted Flakes was like a moldy cereal and they were like, oh, it actually works. You know what I mean? They just figured it out. Wait, the- what? I think that's real. I think that's the Frosted thing. Frosted Flakes I- is a molded cereal? Well, like the way that it happened. Yeah, it was like some, st- it was like the way that it, well, I mean, uh, anything like that. Wait, where did you hear this? Wait. So, wait, in Frosted the, Flakes a was a molded show. cereal? Yeah, it was like it was it happened by accident. Yeah. Like not the frosted part, but like the flakes part. Yeah. Well, I have to look into this like, in a second. Yeah. But for, but I just want to finish off the thought about these incredible please, creatures. Please, yeah, so please I'm just, ignore my No, I'm not ignoring it because we're definitely gonna be looking into no. that. I just um, think I'm I'm so I just can't believe that weird slug creature, this giant keyhole sure. limpet. And he kept repeating it. He wanted to make sure you remembered it. He's just yeah. Flynn's amazing. But they, they figured out, you know, finally that they don't have to kill these creatures to get their blood. They figured out a way to extract the blood so that they can continue to live. And they figured out a way to harvest them and like um, breed them or whatever. I think like in Ventura or something, there's like one place that where they actually figured out how to like breed them. And because if this is successful, which is seeming, I guess, from what I read, I don't know when that last study was, seemed like this could be very successful. Like we're going to run out of them. Like there, there aren't many of them. They're, they only exist kind of you know, really? there's not, there's only one place where they exist and it's just like Southern California and down a little bit to Mexico, just on the coast. And obviously, and they're, it's, it's I wish I knew that when we is, saw that. I know. Yeah. I'm like, I was, I feel like I was in the presence of a celebrity. Like I'm right. like, and I didn't yeah, even know yeah. it. Like that's a magical creature. Right. And I, I was like, look at that gross, weird, dumb slug. And it's what an idiot. He's in a shell. that doesn't fit. Right. Little no, did yeah, I, I mean, know. It's like, you didn't call him. You weren't like that. You weren't derogatory. You were, you were just no, you, yeah, like it's really no, cool. I, I, no, I thought he was awesome, but yeah. like, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I didn't appreciate or respect him in the way that I should have. Yeah, but that's like a life save. Like, it, and and I've I've watched isn't some video it all and I like don't that, isn't now, it all but, like that though? Everything outside, you know. I guess, but I mean, that's pretty incredible. That's remarkable. Go outside, guys. No, but that's like, but not every bug and animal or creature or leaf or whatever that you come across is has cancer fighting you know, properties that can help. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah. I don't know. It really I'm blew kind my of mind. Away by that, yeah. And, um, I just made, I'm, I was like, man, why am I not asking questions like him about everything? Like that sense of wonder and curiosity is so important. And when do we lose that? Like, you know, like, I don't know, but I want it back. But yeah. cause I was like, I couldn't believe what I had learned. Like, and now I just want to know everything about this weird blob. Well, I mean, for to be fair though, for him, like, 
like he can just Google, he can just have his parents Google it. But for, for me, when I was his age, they would have to pull out like the encyclopedia Britannica. You know what I mean? Like it, mm-hmm. would, it would be like, well, we'd have to go to the library to figure that out. I don't know. Like, well, I think like there's my a parents, fear. If I was curious about that when I was a kid, my parents couldn't reverse Google in Well, your dad would just it. know. My dad would just know. <laughs> True. Your dad yeah, would but know. Yeah, like, but you know what I mean? Like, so for, I feel like it's a different, like there's so much information now. Yeah. Good or bad, like at their fingertips to where like our curiosity was like, oh yeah, that's the thing. We don't know. Back on my BMX bike and right away, like, you know, cause there wasn't, I, there I was just, no way I, to- figure that out. Yeah, I, I, I know. I just, I, I think I'm, I love his curiosity and I love his, I do too. I love it. And I love that he wants, he, I don't know. I just, it made me go, Oh my God. Um, but anyway, now I need to look into this moldy frost of flakes thing that you just mentioned. Yeah. I saw it on a show. I think it was the people like, the, like Mythbusters or something. Something like that. Yeah. The, the did, guy, you, did you watch that show? The guy who do I, did I watch Mythbusters? Yeah. Of course. It's like a, I'm home sick from school kind of show to watch. It. Like that. <laughs> Frosted Flakes mold? I mean, what do I search here? If you are watching the podcast, you'll notice that our close-up cameras uh, just, well, Eric's close-up camera died. And the reason it died is because it said it was too hot to handle. It said too hot to function. The temperatures have reached a level. Just overheated it's the camera. Hot. You're just so hot. You it's broke the camera. So You're so sexy and hot that the camera melted. was like, woof. I can't even look at you. It didn't want to so, look at me at um, all. No. Sorry, you don't get a close up of him anymore. Um, so, but I, I, but I looked up this Frosted Flakes things. I couldn't find anything on Frosted Flakes, but Corn Flakes. Right. Maybe that's what I meant to say. Corn I flakes. don't know. I, what, I saw it on a TV so I show. See this Forbes website says, the surprising reason why Dr. John Harvey Kellogg invented Corn Flakes. I'm trying to, I'm looking for the word mold here. You know, I'm like, oh, there's something about mold, Eric. Something, something like about that. mold. Looking, not mold, I'm not but saying, like that, it like... Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing mold, but I am seeing something that's a little, a little X rated. A word popped out at me. I was like, excuse me. What are you talking about here? Uh, hello. What do you mean? Okay. X- this, yeast? if you're, if you're a child, don't <laughs> listen right now anymore. If you're a parent listening around a child, because I'm going to talk about a topic that's what mature. You, what in the world could you be I talking about? I don't see the word. I don't Corn? see the word. N- no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Not corn. Being so weird. Okay. Cereal. Okay. D- oh my God. This is crazy. Colleen. Cereal was not just a health food. Blah, blah, blah. So this guy, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, believed, the- he believed a diet centered on bland foods like cereal would lead Americans away from sin. One very specific sin. Masturbation. He created... Cornflakes to stop people from masturbation. He thought that if people were eating bland <laughs> foods for breakfast, they'd stop. They'd stop doing that. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is like. And also, uh, now my question is: How did you get wires crossed between that and mold? Why did you think it had to be mold? Know, well, I think I saw it. You know that show Drunk History that was like yeah, on com- yeah, I think yeah. I saw I think there was like an episode about that. So that's obviously not like uh I mean there's a lot more to this. A so- verified source of news and facts. I mean, maybe in some cases. Um but that's an interesting tactic to curb Weird, right? Like that what? it says What few- foods would be the opposite, is what I'm saying. Like what like, are I guess super sugary, delicious foods. I don't know. Corn that flakes aren't like, that great. But this says people, few people today would eat Kellogg's corn flakes or Jackson's granola, like from back then, I guess. They had no sugar or added flavors, and they were so tough that they often cracked people's teeth. Uh huh. And when you got a cracked tooth, You're you like don't want to be doing that other stuff. You got a cracked tooth to deal with. So maybe that, I don't know. How weird. I was just not expecting to see that. Um, I wonder if they're, wait. <sighs> I can't even that they're that someone was like, was this what for? Why would they? Why would that be their mission to be like? I need to invent a food that's got to stop me from. <laughs> I don't know if it was maybe for this person had like a chronic. Or it was for like right, you know to stop other people from maybe doing he it. Had but like, like a why? chronic um, issue that he was like, I I can't stop doing this. I need a food. I have no idea. So I need bizarre. To break my teeth and then like, I'll what are, stop. And, and also that that's the solution. Like if someone doesn't like that, they're like, oh, I don't like that this exists in the world, this act, uh-huh. this sinful act. So we have to stop the sinful act. 
I know. I can't, breakfast. I don't trust Let's have this a information. Brec- it's Forbes.com. <laughs> um, I don't know if any of this is true, but um, right. anyway, wild. And- but again, because you had a curious mind, you just Googled it, love. You could just, you could just, you could just look it up. Because okay. see, you got that childhood wonder back. And I mentioned some weird facts that I was wrong about about a cereal. And you asked the right questions and you have the proper tools. And now, I'm, and now to I do, regret it. To do like verified, qualified <laughs> research and then pass that information on to people, you know, will it, fa- with fact checked. Sure. Yeah. Like I think you're like... What you wanted to happen has happened and you have that wonder back and now you know all about cornflakes. And now I wish I didn't. And now anyone that listens to this knows that about cornflakes to be true. I I feel like I don't know anything about cornflakes. Now I know less about cornflakes. I'm just very confused, but I don't want to read any more about this, but I do want to read more about that sea creature. Um, Now, anyway, we've been talking, this is what a weird episode. I don't even know where we've been, but happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. (laughs) You're my lovey forever and I love you so much. And Thanks for making every day feel like Valentine's Day. Same. When I get to be with you, my lovey carrot. And um, I'm going to read a couple of uh, comments from you guys. Thanks for all the sweet comments. Uh, Last week, like I mentioned, most of them were about your dad. Um, So I only have a few, but uh, we did talk last week about your sleep issues how you have uh, yeah. been in did anybody have any um, so many people good advice? had so many people have advice what they say? um by so many i mean like maybe a few because all the <laughs> comments were about your dad but um bianca said eric in all caps mm-hmm. as a non-therapist my advice is yes. to get blue light blocking glasses mm-hmm. or to put your phone into nighttime mode as a compromise they say the blue light is what causes your brain to be active at night so it's worth a shot that we can still enjoy your technology yeah. That's cute advice. Yeah, that's did you try what, that yet? Um, I think I do have blue light blocking in my glasses, <laughs> hmm. um, but I don't always wear them at night. Um, so there's that. And then I, I had a question for you. Sure. Hallie said, anyone ever notice how Eric says, can you read this? Because I don't, I've never noticed you saying this interesting. So now I'm like, what is this person talking like about? You're messing with okay. Me read that. this comment. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's weird about it. Cause I've never heard you say this weird. All of a sudden? Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's, I don't know. It, 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 they said, has anyone, anyone noticed how he says all of the sudden? All of a sudden. All, all of the sudden. I don't, I don't, do I say that weird? I No, I don't think so. So now I'm confused. And then all of a sudden. Do you say all of a sudden? And then all of a sudden. I don't, I'm I don't trying know. to give you different line readings of it, yeah. but like. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But if, if someone can, can we have a follow up to that? That's my follow up question. What do you mean? Um, cause I, now and I want to know, of a sudden. um, and, uh, this comment about your dad was, I thought very sweet from Kristen. She quoted something he said on the phone call with us last week. He said, some of the best and smartest people I ever saw were on the back porch or at a kitchen table. And she put a crying emoji. I am sobbing and claiming him as my dad too. I'm oh. never going to forget that, to be honest. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. Right I loved that comment so he much. Didn't, he didn't want us to feel stupid. I know, but like, what is, I don't know. I just, it was such a sweet thing to say, but anyway. Right. And the final comment I'm going to read. thing to say. Yeah. Um, since it is Valentine's day <laughs> and it's all about love. Okay. I'm going to read a loving comment towards you. Eric is so amazing. What a man. He is such an emotional, intelligent human with such a good heart. So patient and just all around a good human. You got really blessed Colleen with this man. Plus super, super handsome. Why are you embarrassing me so much? Oh my gosh. Why are you guys flirting? You're flirting with her. Gwendolyn Marshall XU3GR. Gwendolyn? I know. Um, Yeah, I agree. He's pretty, pretty wonderful. And I just, it makes me happy when other people recognize it too. Um, That's not true. So anyway, thanks for listening. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, And uh, be curious. Unless it's about cornflakes, then maybe don't be curious. Mm Mm-hmm. Bye. I think it's okay. <laughs> Bye. You can relax. That's the name of our podcast.